You might be wondering why I'm wearing my readers today. It's because we're going to be doing an overhaul of a rear derailleur clutch. And there's tiny little pieces. Yeah, Brandon's got his too. <laughs> you got to see what we're doing. Let's get on topic. <laughs> Hey everybody, it's Thomas with Get Out Arizona and you are watching another amazing, stupendous, I can't believe it's not butter episode of Toolbox <laughs> Topic. Once again, I'm joined by my co-host Brandon Van Leuven. Brandon, how the hell are you, my friend? Great. Yeah, look at that. He tried auditioning for uh, Mario Brothers movie, but Chris <laughs> Pratt beat him out, you know? I guess being Brad Pitt's ass stunt double doesn't... Doesn't get it carries you. much weight no. as it used to. Yeah, didn't think so. And it happens, though. Um, once again, we're at the Trek Bicycle Store of West Phoenix, where the cool kids hang out, and me. And today, we're going to be servicing the rear clutch assembly on a rear derailleur for Shimano um, Dior, but this be any Shimano rear derailleur that has a clutch assembly. Correct. Okay. 11 and 12 speed, this is going to be relevant for both of those, for both of those. those systems. I got my readers, Brandon's got his glasses, there's some tiny parts. <laughs> I'm gonna be hand holding the <laughs> second camera so we can really get in there good and hopefully get some good B-roll shots cut in with this so you guys can see um, actually what's going on and everything. Um, tell us a little bit about it and when exactly, because yeah. I remember clutches didn't always come on rear derailers. No, no. These, <laughs> so. things, these things came out uh, primarily to add more tension to the system so we have less chain slap. Okay. Also for our one by systems, it creates more tension so we have less chance of the chain falling off okay so it's a very ingenious piece of equipment that we have here um, and if we're not familiar with that uh, the clutch is this little piece right here that you can turn on or off it's itself con it's contained inside this housing okay and you can actually physically feel the difference in tension I mean I'm exaggerating a little bit right. for, for, <laughs> for the camera it's but the magic there's, of Hollywood but guys. there certainly is a difference in tension when we engage the clutch now after a while a little bit of dirt gets in there, it gets dried out, especially in Arizona. We always say, right. especially in Arizona, things get dried out. And what you could potentially feel is, right now, this is a, this is a fairly new derailleur. Um, unfortunately for this guy, he had a very short life. Um, you can see it looks almost brand new, but she is beat up. It hit, the, uh, it hit the curb, I think. Yeah. And so uh, it, it is dead. But for today's demonstrative purposes... It'll work out good. This is going to work out perfect. You know what'll work out good, too? Is if you hit that like and subscribe button right now. Oh, nice and done. Yeah, right? Because <laughs> we know you guys, will, some will make it to the end, some will not. And even if you make it to the end, it's no guarantee. So although we've had a lot of, you know, super great positive response and everything like that, a lot of you guys are forgetting to hit the like and subscribe button. So please do that now. It'll help out this video on the channel immensely. All right, Brandon, continue. Very cool. All yeah. right, so here we go. Um, unfortunately, this one, since it is brand new, it's going to be nice and clean inside. It's going to look great, but we'll still pretend it's dirty right. in there. We've done that before. <laughs> yeah, that's yeah right. it's the magic exactly. of Hollywood. So. Exactly. So All right. let's get, uh, let's All get right. close in let's on this guy. Let's get close in on this guy. And uh, we're going to put the spectacles on now. Oh, everything's so much clearer. Uh, so what we have here are three bolts that uh, put the housing together. This is a two millimeter. I have my two millimeter here, and let's let's run quickly over the uh, the uh, tools that I'm using here. Very simple procedure. Um, again, you'll know you need to do this if you were to move the um, the cage, and it was you could hear sounds. Okay. And you can even actually feel that it's grindy and gritty when you're coming through. That will ab um, absolutely affect shifting. So that'd be a great time to, to cut this guy open and, and take a look. So I have a two millimeter Allen wrench. I have a flat head screwdriver. I have a small pick. Hopefully we don't need to use this little guy, but we'll get, we'll see what happens. I have uh, the recommended Shimano internal free, uh, excuse me, internal hub grease that is recommended for this. Okay. And we'll talk a little bit about that more. And I have isopropyl alcohol okay. with some clean rags. Nice. All we're missing is one of those bars and the beers that we did in the last oh, episode. Oh man. Why didn't we think of that? All right. So we're going to be very careful with these guys. It's a very small screw. So that's why I have my little dish out as well, because that's a magnified dish. Right. And I can put it right in there and not lose anything. And when we open this up, we'll see the inner workings of the clutch. It's a pretty basic, pretty basic system which also makes it easy to service. So if I remove the cover, this is what we got going on inside. We have a roller right. bearing, a band, and a cam. 
And if you notice, I'm going to hold, hold this together so it doesn't pop apart. If I engage the clutch, the cam on this little roller kind of squeezes that band and mm -hmm. squeezes the roller bearing. Nice. Now this is the part that gets dirty inside here. Um, and that's what causes all the friction yeah. and the hesitation is when we got dust and dryness going on inside here. So I'm going to disengage the clutch and then I can remove the roller bearing and that little cam. And I'll use a little bit of this guy to try to pry it up. There you go. And now I can remove the cam section. Okay. And the roller bearing, which we want to clean out, is a little, it's in there tough. It's in there pretty solid. So using my flat edge screwdriver, just give yourself a little bit of gap in there, okay. and that guy will come right out. Those are my parts. Now, okay. if you see inside here, even a brand new... Don, you guys can see what he's got in there so far. Even a brand new one has just a little bit of kind of grime in there, even a brand new. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to remove the gasket as well. We're going to clean that, and then we're also going to give it a light uh, layer of grease in a, in a moment. So using my isopropyl alcohol, I'll keep it away from your camera. I'm just going to give it a little, just a little squirt, just to keep it, just to get, make it moist, and then we'll do our best cleaning up around here. Now this would be a lot more satisfying, obviously, if it was all dry and dusty and gross Dirty, inside. Yeah. So, um, well, we've had again. a had to take apart clean stuff before, for <laughs> yeah. example. That's right. And then we're going to clean the gasket as well. It's already clean, but so you can just imagine what that would be like. That's all we're going to do. We're we'll clean that up. We're going to okay. clean up these guys as well, if they were dirty, but they're not. And now I will just reassemble. Once we're satisfied with how clean they are, we'll start reassembling. Okay. Now we're going to, what I'm going to do is put just a little bit of dab of this grease on my on my rag here, and then okay. you probably should use gloves for this, but you know. Probably. And then we'll just put just a little bit light layer on where I'm going to put that gasket first. And then. That might be a little too much, to be honest with you. I might got a little, a little crazy with it. Yeah, yeah a little so celebrate don't, don't a little do, bit. Don't do that much. It happens. But you'll get the idea. Yeah. And then we can replace the gasket in there nice and gently. Now, now we're going to move on to the roller bearing also. Just a very thin layer. This is a little thinner than I anticipated. So if you go to the Tech Docs, Shimano recommends that you only use this particular grease for this application. Okay. Uh, most people at home will not have this. Some people may have some free hub grease at home, right. which in some cases will work well, but may not last as long, and you may need to do the service um, more frequently. Okay. Brandon. Yes. Yeah, there's a close-up of that mustache. <laughs> Look at that. If Mr. Finger was back in town, we'd be having a heyday. <laughs> All right, so I'm going to open up the band again. I'm going to get ready to reinstall my roller like, bearing. Dude, I thought, it, I thought that guy was gone. That so was... opening up a little bit, I can replace my roller bearing. Okay. I got a little bit of schmutz in there. What is that? And that'll slide in there nice and easy. And you want that flush on there. And then again, if you just remove that, just the, just the design of the band will keep it in there nice and snug. Okay. Here comes the tricky part. So I have this little cam guy right okay. here. So it is, it does need to be specifically oriented so that it works when you flip the lever. Right. It's not a big deal. If you get it wrong the first time, you just take it apart and you try again, try, again. try the orientation again. Okay. What I found is a good way to do it is I have this little lip right here. So I want you to hold it still for a second. I'm gonna okay. zoom in. So here's that little lip. Okay. And I found that the best way to do it is if I get that little lip and I spin this, that is my correct orientation. We'll see what happens here in a moment. Oh, yeah. But uh, actually, I did that backwards. <laughs> <laughs> Edit, cut, <laughs> reprint. See? So here, again, here's that little lip. And I'm going to let it spin around. And this is, oh, my, yeah. this is where it gets a little tricky. So now I'll take a little bit of dexterity. And again, it may take a couple times to do this. Right. Hopefully not. But you need to align these guys up. 
pop it into place. Now let's see if I oriented it right. And I did not. Oh, so Brandon. <laughs> You're not the that's current okay. Jeopardy champion, mm -hmm. that's for sure. So let's try again. And this might be embarrassing. Nope. Brandon. Well, that's why we edit, right? Do you have performance anxiety? Dude, this stuff's going <laughs> in. I don't want people to see that you're, you're human like the rest of us. <laughs> There we go. Ah, third time's a charm. Look third at that, time's guys. A charm. Look at that. So now we can remove, the, um, put the cover back on. Now this is only a um, 1.5 to 2 newton meter little guy. <laughs> okay. So all you're going to do is close the cap. Just close the cap. Once you see it snug on the, um, all the way around the housing, right. you can just stop. I hope nobody's getting motion sickness from the handheld camera. That would be bad. <laughs> now, personally, I do not use my clutch. I think it does affect the shifting. I think the, the system feels better without the clutch on. Okay. So I don't use mine and I'll rarely do this, but once you've got it all put back together, mm -hmm. see if it feels smooth again. Lo and behold, it feels smooth, it feels good. And I still need to do this, but for time's sake, you get the idea. Yeah. Get all the screws in place and everything, and yep. you're good to go. And just make sure it's smooth when you've got it back put together, and awesome. your shifting will be much improved. And there you have it, guys. All right, so all that being said and done, um, go ahead and that off fairly easy i would say if anything it was tedious because of the the size of the parts that you're working with so and then Sometimes. having to <laughs> realign you know a couple times to get it right right so exactly um, but it's you know it's just one of those things you just once yeah. you get it a couple of times you'll in a little bit of practice yeah it's, it's a very easy service and it just makes a world of difference in the performance of the of the derailleur okay um and you know it took brandon a couple tries and you know and laugh and joke around here and everything <laughs> for just i want everybody to realize though for someone who does it a lot i won't say every day but does it a lot <laughs> it can happen so again if you get it wrong the first time don't sweat it he got deal. it wrong twice in one shot. Are you kidding me? I'm joking, guys. I got to bust his balls a little bit. But I seriously, practice is going to make perfect on a lot of these things. And this is something that you really don't need. I wouldn't necessarily call these specialty tools other than no. the lube. You know, want to have the proper um, uh, lubrication as far as that goes. But um, a lot of these tools, most, I would think, enthusiastic mountain bike riders or roadies would have in their garage anyways to yes. begin with. Yeah. So. I know I do. <laughs> and ask me again if I use any of those tools for this shit. No, as I bring it down here. We've had this discussion before. Okay. So now a derailleur with a clutch, not having it engaged, obviously isn't going to affect performance adversely. It's just going to disengage the clutch. And you can either use it or not use it. It's up to you. Personal that's why, preference. That's yeah. why there's a lever on there. Yeah, personal preference, guys. So yep. um, remember on this channel, we try not to speak in absolutes. You have to use the clutch. It's the only way, or, you know, these are the best items for your bike or whatever. That's, that's not who we are. So this is one of those cases where you do have a choice. So, um, ride it both ways. See what you think. Um, you might be surprised yep. as far as, as far as that goes. So. It is nice not to have the chain slap, but I'd rather have a nice, smooth, easy shift personally. Oh, I, I like that slap. Especially oh, wait, we're talking about chain slap. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry. <laughs> good show you got into that one too <laughs> that was good <laughs> so all right well guys there you have it a fairly easy now we always talk about as far as how often you should do this we've talked about it with every maintenance that we've done how often should you service your clutch is it one of those things if you're using your clutch and you're like oh it's it's feeling off service it is it 
you know, once every three months, quarterly. Um, I feel like that is a an awareness, like a okay. rider awareness. You know, if you if you take care of your bike and you run through it and you do your own maintenance, you clean, give that give that uh, um, lower cage just a little bit of push back and forth and see if it feels grindy see, or gritty or makes sounds. Okay. If that if it is, it is it's time. time to, it's time to, to, do, uh, okay. to do an overhaul. And your mileage will vary, no pun intended. Obviously, here in the Southwest, it's dusty, it's dirty. Every time we ride the road, trail, anything like that, there's stuff getting into you know the moving parts and the equipment. Um, so depending on what area of the United States you live in, or if you happen to be watching this somewhere else in the world, which would be interesting, um, comment down below if you are. <laughs> um, you know, consult your local bike shop. Okay, we are we try to do these for a broad range of people and everything. But right. remember, demographics is is really important. So so consult your local bike shop on these types of matters. So, um, all right, guys. Well, there you have it. Now, there's a couple things you can do. Now that we're at the end, you can hit the like, the subscribe, and the bell notification icon if you haven't already, even though we asked you to in the beginning of the video, because <laughs> it's gonna do a few things. One, it's gonna help out the video. Two, it's gonna help out the channel. And three, you're gonna get notified every time we post a new video. Whether that's a bike showcase, whether that's a toolbox topic, whether that's a garage talk, you'll know when the new stuff comes around. Secondly, there's a link down below for Trek Bicycle Store of West Phoenix. If you have any questions on anything that you've seen today, any of the previous videos that we have uploaded and there's going to be a link up top so you can see all those uh, previous episodes follow the link give these guys a call they're really helpful they have no issue as far as answering your question uh, the best they can over the phone sometimes it's hard people describe them what's going on with their stuff um, but they will do their best if you're local come on in and see them um, you guys are open Monday through Friday from 10 to 7 and Saturday from 10 to 5 Sunday 11 to 4. Uh, Sunday 11 to 4. There we go. I don't work on Sunday, so okay, I care. <laughs> you know, I should have known that because I've been here on a Sunday before. I've wrecked my bike and come in. Um, so now, unfortunately, Copper State Bike and Hike is going away. So we're not going to have the link down there below. Some of you guys have been following us and everything. You'll be like, Thomas, where's that link? It's going away. We don't know what's going to really happen with that, but we'll keep you guys posted. But if you want to see any of the bikes that you've, we've you know, shown either in a showcase or a toolbox topic, you can still come down to the shop. You know, it's just another excuse to come down here. And you see something and ride something and feel it, touch it, and then you buy it, because that's how it works. At least that's how it works with me. That's why Brandon doesn't let me ride the bikes all that often, because he knows I'm going to want to buy it. So, um, Now, the other links down below for our social media, Instagram, uh, Facebook, and TikTok. Follow those. You're going to be kept up to date on day-to-day uh, -day affairs with Get Out Arizona. And the other links, ah, there's so many links these days our uh, affiliate links, some of them, not all of them, but I have to let you know. So if you follow one of those links and you make a qualifying purchase, Get Out Arizona actually might receive a small commission. Doesn't mean you're gonna pay anymore, but it means it helps us out with coffee, gas money, park passes, mm. stuff like that, bars, beer at this <laughs> point. That beer was good, dude. The first one and the last one, that was, that was good stuff. So I'm not gonna lie. But anyways, all right, on that note, and I think that's it. Cool, man. We covered everything. So what do I always say, guys, seriously? Starting in 2022, this is probably going to be the third Saturday in January, if memory serves me correct. And we've got two great episodes, back-to-back -back episodes for bike fitting coming up. But seriously, guys, what do we always say? Be kind to yourself and others. Be amazing stewards out on that trail. And we have to ask, what are you waiting for? Get out Arizona. Yeah. We'll see you on that next adventure. Take care, everybody. Brandon, thank you so much, man. We'll see you next week. Cool. <clears throat>